So in this presentation, I would like to talk about how you can see your chronotype from, the, from your own data and how you can make use of your chronotype to optimize your life. Namely, in your body, there are a lot of things that go up and down synchronized with a 24-hour body clock. And your body learns to expect you some things, like you, when you are rising the steps up, upwards, you expect that every step is the same height. And if they're not, you get stressed and it's difficult. So your body learns that what's the best time to wake up. And that's time when your melatonin secretion stops and you have highest testosterone secretion, for instance, in the morning. There are also optimum times for your physical activity when, to, when your injury risk is the lowest. And in the evening, if you're normally in, in dim light conditions, your melatonin starts to rise in the morning. So in this presentation, I would like to talk about two main things. is the importance of consistency in your daily rhythms and also how you need to prepare your body for the next phase to better uh, to reduce stress and to match with your chronotype. The difficult thing here is that we can't provide a universal daily schedule for everybody because we're all different and because chronotype is at least 50% genetically uh, determined. It's a biological thing. It's not a choice that you can make. But you can train your body, adjust your rhythm slightly. There are, some of you are morning type of persons who, who get sleepy early and especially they get easily awakened in the morning. Even though they travel several time, time zones, they soon ad back, adapt back to their normal morning type of rhythm. They can't help. These people are st still like, in current society, these are these fortunate people that are most successful businessmen and, and, exist, and, and most, most healthy. And, and so, so but, but on the other hand, in the evening, they are not able to socialize too late. So they pay a price for being so successful. And a lot of artists, creative people, are evening type of persons. And they need to adjust every day to the requirements of society to be like ready to wake up early enough to make it early to work or, or school or anyway. And throughout the day, and their health, health is worse. And uh, their daily performance is a little slower. There is also science that shows about these differences between the chronotypes. Overall, in human being, this upper picture is showing, uh, uh, it's actually showing keystroke time, a very basic measure of a cognitive performance. It's measured actually how, how fast people type in search engines. And uh, like, Typing faster means better performance, and typing slower means worse performance. So during night, between four and five, is a time when people are typing the slowest. And during the normal office hours, people are the fastest typers. But then, there are actually differences between people according to their sleep midpoint. And I will then now take a shortcut and talk about them as chronotypes. Like early sleepers are now assumed like, like 
morning chronotype and late sleepers evening chronotype. You see that all these have this basic pattern that day is better than night in performance. The morning people have their peak performance earlier than intermediate. And these late evening type of people have lower performance throughout the day. But what's significant for me is that morning type of people have a steep rise, in a steep decline in performance in the late afternoon. So they know that the evening is coming, my performance is coming worse. This intermediate type of people that most of us are don't have so steep decline. And we have difficult, more difficulties going early enough to bed. And especially difficult it is for late type of people because they don't feel the difference between late afternoon and night. It's also important to know this about this consistency. Because if you have a normal seven to nine hour sleep duration, you get the highest performance. Fastest, you are typing the fastest. If you have only slightly shorter sleep, it's not hardly affected at all. If you have clearly shorter sleep, four to six hours, like Temu Arena, it's a slightly, but not that significant. Significant. But now that Temu makes a compensatory night and sleeps 9 to 12 hours, the performance goes down. So, what, it doesn't help to sleep in in the weekends, contrary to our beliefs and our maybe it's, I don't know what our dopamine is saying, but, but it really doesn't help in a real performance metrics to sleep in. It doesn't help to, to have short nights. Consistency is the key. And here, actually, it's especially, we are especially vulnerable for sleeping late in the morning because too early bedtime is not as problematic for our basic cognitive performance metrics as is early bedtime. So if you need to sleep longer, go to bed a little earlier. This also goes, these studies go, goes to that fact that doing your school work at the same time of the day, during a class day and during non-class day, gives you best grade point averages. This must be also linked that if you work, uh, uh, do your school work like at a normal time, maybe you go to bed earlier. So maybe it's also a sign of the whole circadian rhythm stability, but, but in this study, it was specifically measured what time they locked in into their school system where they did their schoolwork. But consistency in schoolwork time produces highest grade. So it also means that if you want to become a greatest, it can also be ex ex extrapolated that if you want to become an athlete, it might be best to do the trainings at the same time that you have the competitions and always train the same time. So our life is not always ideal. So what kind of markers we can see in real life? Because we would like to see this optimal hammock-shaped heart rate curve, for instance. Our heart rate and body temperature should be the lowest according, according to the literature around 4 a.m. and after that it should be rising to prepare us for the coming morning, to, be, to wake up refreshed. In the practice, a lot of people have alcohol, late meals, late exercise, that keep their metabolisms high and their heart rate is the lowest when they should be waking up in the morning. Or they go to bed too late or too tired when their heart rate in goes up during the first uh, half of their night because, and they don't get the restorative, most restorative sleep. In ideal world, like in this example, human being can wake up synchronized by the rising sun, like, like Chuck is doing here in Colorado, except for some of the journeys to other continents. Some people are able to have morning people 
are re ready to wake up with the rising sun, and they are living in the latitudes where sunrise time is pretty constant. In real life, you can live in northern Finland. Uh, the time of the sunrise is no timekeeper at all, because it's changing throughout the year. And people sleep in during weekends, as in this case you say, it's longer sleep nights every single week, weekend. This kind of change, inconsistency, is causing phenomena that's called social jet lag. This is some statistics from current Aura users. I would say that the average of Aura user gets just above seven hours of sleep duration. This is from past two weeks. But what's significant is that even Aura users have quite much instability in their sleep time, because average standard deviation is something like 65. Well, the most typical standard deviation is about 65 minutes. So overusers are getting six to eight hours of sleep, typically. So the main issue is not that they are not sleeping enough, it's that they have some inconsistency. One of the newest features in the new Aura Ring is the optimal bedtime. <clears throat> it means it's calculated based on your most common wake-up times, because we want to support consistency. It's marked like half an hour to one hour period. When your data shows that you are getting the best sleep scores. Sometimes in real life, your work may require to wake up, like in this case, 1 a.m. So, Aura, for this customer, Aura recommended a bedtime between 7 and 8 p.m. You can see that this kind of too early bedtime compared to the sun rhythm may also cause some uh, sleep disturbances, as you can see in this example. So, in real life, you need to find a compromise between your life requirements and, and your chronotype and your optimus sleep window. We need to, so Aura starts from your real life data and finds the best fitting for you. And then, if you are able to get good quality sleep, you can tolerate with your life requirements. If I would like to summarize, we everybody have our life requirements. And the main, main question may be that which one is more important? Living according to your chronotype or, or keeping this like consistency? Because you might need to wake up like same time in the morning, even though your chronotype would, would prefer longer. Uh, like later wake up time. So we always promote consistency that fits into your lifestyle. And then, secondly, you need to think if you can change your life, because you can't change your sleep only. You need to change and think about your, your, your training, your eating, your work, so that they all would be synchronized with your chronotype. Second important thing is to get prepared for sleep. The human body doesn't transition like directly from like very active and hectic work, stressful life to most peaceful, deepest sleep. It simply doesn't happen. And I have had some kind of uh, 
how would you call these things that when you don't agree on everything with your wife or something like that, and then you don't speak very openly any longer? I can see it in my sleep crafts. So, so the biochemical condition that is in, in my, my brain before I go to bed, I, I take it with me to sleep. And sleep is not like unconscious situation, but it is like a real life situation. So one of the most important things to, in preparing good night's sleep is to be grateful so you need to organize your whole day so that you can somehow be satisfied that the day has served your long-term targets. It's like aligned, aligned with your ethics and your good targets. That you can then like forget your stress, be grateful. So human, we are like psychophysiological entity. We need to remember that what we think, what we do during the day, they are reflected in our night. When you think, when you go up the stairs and think that, wonder if the next step is the same height as the rest of the steps, you can think if you're your daily rhythm is following a regular pattern that your body functions can expect what's happening the next. And then you can imagine that if you had one extra hour in your 24-hour day, that what would you do with that extra hour? And if you have thoughts, please call to our Facebook page and fill in and we have, have a raffle for one. How does uh, the, the, this uh, German concept of Schlafstunde, uh, okay, like uh, sleeping in the middle of the day and uh, like taking a nap in the middle of the night, in the night or having a binaural sleep, uh, can you relate to it? How does it affect uh, versus, you know, having one long sleep? <coughs> Basically, there are the effect is different depending on the time. So, like 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 having physical activity in the middle of lay, day, having like light exposure in the middle of the day doesn't affect. So it's also like if you like time your naps, like 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 two p.m., which is at the time of siesta or something like that. It. I can't uh, say that if it's affecting, like if it's part of the previous night or next night, and if it's sought, particularly if it's sought enough, that it doesn't prevent you from getting sleep at the right time. So it, it is not playing that big role in your circadian alignment. But if you are sleeping, more, let's say like one hour or two hours, most probably it will spoil your circadian rhythms a little bit because you don't get sleep at the right time. And it's same with like physical activity. That there are like it's like strange that physical activity. If you want to adjust your circadian rhythms, like for me, it was surprised to see that it's actually quite late. Physical activity that actually delays a rhythm. It's like uh, some some two hours before bedtime. It's delaying. Then two to three hours is not affecting that much. Three to four hours before. It's advancing your rhythm. You get sleepy before. So working backwards from, from your from normal bedtime, there's actually this kind of window like three to four hours before that you can actually get sleepy before and earlier. So and and, and some two hours before is basically too late. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, when you say the morning people are healthier and more productive, uh, is that because there is some inherent benefit to getting up earlier. Is that because they have to adapt to the time schedule of the general? There can be both. Based on some of the data here, we could also see see that even even like a, that the delayed bedtime was was working like across these chronotypes. So 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 that 
for me, it was important to see that you can really um, make some change. Most probably, that will transfer to other aspects as well. That was only for cognitive performance that I showed. But I expect it will transform to these health factors. But secondly, it's also possible that there is also that this the genetic advantage that's like linked with, because there is not one single clock gene that tells your chronotype. These scientists have used like some like 20 most promising genes, and they can only explain with those, those genes like less than 10% of your chronotype. But they have found some, some, some genes anyway. But those is genetic, the percentage of genetic part is expected based on twin studies. But that's, 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 that's interesting because you really can't always separate the genetic effect and the, what you can how, do by changing your behavior. It's the same with physical action. One more question in the middle. Boom. Good catch. Good, huh? Hi. Uh, <laughs> so um, the studies you've done on reaction time, have you also studied the same for chronotypes? When it comes to ability to focus and pain. Yes, it, those studies I was referring to where were not my my own yeah. own studies. Yeah. So 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 I need to ask if you have if I, if you would like to me to comment anything on the topic still, even though I'm not done them personally. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. And the question was: Are there any studies that looked at exactly what you what you looked at? But instead of reaction time, looked at ability to focus and pay attention yeah, related that, to chronotype. Like, there, mu there, there must be some. I'm not completely aware of that. But this it also like requires some understanding, further understanding. For instance, that which sleep is, uh, stages are important for, for which kind of memory and cognition because there can be differences. But uh, here, the matrix was very simple. But I think it was both in the slides I was showing, it's both the, like strength and limitation in a way, because, because I can think it's at, at so like core level, we can see like the effect. So, so more complicated tasks and attention span and things like that might be a little, have different like time curve, but, yeah. but most probably they are there. I just need to dig in deeper into that yeah. literature. So certainly the data and what it can be used for hasn't been fully figured out yet, but Aura is one that has a really good chance to do that. And so far they've been able to build a product that's actually helpful. And compared to the rest of the industry, their engagement rate is higher. Most wearables are abandoned after you know four or five months. I'm, I'm still you know years using this thing, and I still find it useful every morning. I, Check it out, and that's often the case for a lot of people. So thank you very much, Hannu. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you all.